Hello happy eaters, welcome back in my kitchen. I might sound a bit funny, that's because I have a bit of a cold, but we're going to ignore that and make pizza instead. I'll be making Indian inspired saag paneer pizza and the recipe is not as much about the crust as it is about the filling which is incredibly delicious if you like saag paneer as much as I do. But I'm going to share with you my crust recipe if you're interested. Here it goes. Two cups of rice flour and two cups of spelt flour. That makes 450 grams of flour. One cup, that's 250 ml of oat milk. Half a cup of hot water. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Eight grams of instant yeast. And a teaspoon of salt. This recipe is not vegan. I'll be using two types of cheeses, mozzarella and paneer, the traditional Indian cheese that will never melt. So if you are vegan, you could replace uh, paneer with tofu or skip it altogether and choose any cheese that is vegan to replace the mozzarella. Let's go make it. For the sack you need 450 grams of chopped frozen spinach defrosted, 4 cloves of garlic, 1 inch of ginger, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, 1 teaspoon of turmeric, 2 teaspoons of ground coriander, 1 teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter of a teaspoon of cloves, quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom powder and 1 teaspoon of salt, chickpeas, onions, tomato puree, cherry tomatoes, and my cheeses of choice are mozzarella and paneer. In my food processor, I already have my flour mix, and to that I'm adding the instant yeast, and pulse it a few times. I'm adding half a cup of hot boiling water to my milk. This will make my oat milk lukewarm, and I'm adding this to the flour mix. Then I add my olive oil and salt. A few drops of olive oil. just to make the dough not stick so here it is lovely elastic dough dust the surface this is a very untraditional recipe but i like it because i cranked up the nutritional value a little bit and it's lower in gluten now it's important to not overwork it because you want to keep it elastic shape it into a nice little bun and place it in your bowl like that I cover up the bowl with a clean tea towel and let it rest in a warm spot for about an hour so the pizza dough can rise. And I didn't add any sugar to my milk. That's because I'm using oat milk, which has natural sugars in it. If you're using regular milk or almond milk, uh, you should add sugar because otherwise the yeast won't be able to activate. So this one is going in a warm spot. Preheat the oven at 220 Celsius. I'd like to top the pizza with caramelized onions, so I'm chopping them in half moons. I'm using two onions. I want these onions nice and brown and caramelized, and I'm going to saute them for quite a bit, maybe 10 minutes. Add some salt to taste. I rinsed out my food processor to make the filling and first up is my frozen defrosted spinach and I drain it first because who wants soggy pizza? Nobody, that's who. Loads of garlic, four cloves, crush it, some grated ginger. You cannot make Indian food without loads and loads of spices. All of these spices are a staple in my pantry and if you're going to buy them, you will not regret it because they're going to give life to so many recipes. So here goes my turmeric, cayenne pepper, coriander and cumin. And here's some cinnamon and ground cloves and ground cardamom pods and salt. You can also use whole cardamom pods. Just crush them with your knife and uh, grind them up a little bit. Pulse it to combine. This already smells delicious. I'm just kidding, I can't smell anything. It's supposed to smell delicious.
question is, am I still allowed to call this pizza? My answer would be, if it is as tasty as this, it doesn't really matter. I hope you like this. I hope you subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.